In this video, we will be talking about class boundaries. So, from the frequency table that we have constructed, we have to add another column for class boundary. So, the given, the values for the class boundaries were already given here. So, our task is to discuss how did we obtain that particular value. So, the values that are inside, uh, no, inside the box, we called it as true lower class boundaries. So, how are we going to obtain that one? We are going to use the value of our lower limit. So, kapag true lower class boundaries ang ating isolve, ang gagamitin ng mga values ay ang mga lower limit. So, for the first class interval, the value of our lower limit is 10. So, we have to subtract it by 0.5. Saan nang galing si 0.5? Si 0.5, that is half of our precision value. Okay, if you can recall in my previous video, na-introduce ko doon yung mga precision value. Kapag ang mga data set na given ay whole number, the precision value is 1. So, for this example, our given data set is whole number. So, that means the precision value is 1. Then, half of that is 0.5. So, that is why to obtain the first true lower class boundary, we have to subtract 0.5 from 10. Yes. And that is equal to 9.5. Okay, for the next true lower class boundary, we will be using the second lower limit which is 13. 13 minus 0. 0.5, that is equals to 12.5. So, that is why I have here 12.5. Okay, for the remaining 5 true lower Class boundaries, you have to solve it based on our illustration and then check if your obtained values are the same with the values posted here. Okay, so in this slide, we will be talking about true upper class boundaries. So, all the values inside the box, these are the true upper class boundaries. So, what are the values that we will be using to solve this is, of course, the upper limit. So, for the first class interval, our upper limit there is 12. So, kung sa true lower class boundary, ang ginamit natin ay subtraction. So, this time, yung isasolve natin ay true upper class boundary. So, we are not going to subtract but we have to add 0.5. So, again, saan ang galing si 0.5? That is half of our precision value. Our precision value for whole number is 1. So, half of it is 0.5. So, that is why we have 12 plus 0.5. Our first true upper class boundary is 12.5. Okay, for the next class interval... Our upper limit is 15. So, 15 plus 0.5, that gives us 15.5 as the second true upper class boundary. Okay? So, you continue the process. 
that is also to check if you really have understood uh, our discussion okay so you may pause this one or you may copy the values presented and then compare it with your computation okay so let us have this another example this time uh, our data set is not whole number this is uh, the frequency table that we have constructed from uh, my previous video so again the numbers inside the box these are the true lower boundaries so how are we going to obtain that one first you need to look at what is the lower limit for your first class interval so your lower limit is 40.5 minus 0 0.05 so back it 0 0.05 okay so again you check the table of precision so our data set our given data set has one decimal place so the precision value for that is 0.1 so what is half of 0.1 that is 0 0.05 so 40.5 minus 0 0.05 that gives us 40.45 that is now our first true lower boundary so for the second true lower boundary or no true lower limit so we have to uh we have to subtract 0 0.05 from the lower limit which is 43.8 so that is equal to 43.75 okay so please continue the in this slide we will now be talking about true upper boundaries so the values inside the box these are the true upper boundaries so how are we going to obtain that one so consider the first class interval we will be using the values for the upper limit so in this interval the upper limit is 43.7 so to obtain the true upper limit which is 43.7 all you have to do is add 43.7 plus 0 0.05 so saan ba nang galing si 0 0.05 again uh, that is the half of the precision number. Okay, so for the second true upper limit, we have to use 47 since that is the value of the upper limit and then add it to 0 0.05. So that gives us 47.05 as the second true upper limit okay so please continue the process and then you check if you the values that you have computed are the same with the values posted here okay so that ends our video and for the next video we will be talking about cumulative frequencies